Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV and we're introducing a series of videos based around float fishing on rivers. Now float fishing on rivers is obviously a massive subject. There's thousands of different types of floats, different patterns, different sizes and different ways to present them throughout all the different rivers that we fish. So it is a massive subject. What we're going to do is break it down into four mini videos, which is stick float fishing, bolo fishing, avon float fishing and waggler fishing. So hopefully the tips that you pick up through these videos regarding the rods, the reels, the lines, the floats and rigs that I like to use for my river fishing will be a great help to you when you're out on the river. On this episode of float fishing on rivers, we're going to look at stick floats. The stick floats has got to be one of the most enjoyable floats for using on rivers. Um, obviously, like I said in the introduction, just float fishing itself on rivers is a massive topic and that certainly goes for stick floats. There's so many different patterns and styles and also opinions. Um, it's also fair to say that in recent years, pole fishing on rivers has probably um, taken the limelight over actual running line river stick float. But nevertheless, in my river match fishing and pleasure fishing, stick float fishing still plays a big part. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the, the patterns of floats that I tend to use um, when I'm fishing uh, across all the rivers in the UK. So we've actually got a, a finesse stick float. This is a, a Drennan stick float. We've got four wire stem stick floats and one lignum. So we're going to look at those in turn. We're going to try to explain about the different rigs, the presentations and the tackle that we use to maximise the efficiency of these fantastic floats. So first up is these finesse stick floats. Obviously these are very very lightweight in terms of capacity but also very slender in terms of the design. So you'll notice that they've got very very fine tips um, short balsa bodies with a nice slender cane stem. So really for me this is where stick float fishing started as a kid. Um, this is how I grew up fishing on the Warwickshire Raven, fishing with light line, uh, small hooks, targeting fish like roach and dace, gudgeon and odd chub. So for me in my modern match fishing I don't tend to fish these floats as much now. Occasionally I will in certain situations when I'm pleasure fishing, I like nothing better than fishing with floats like this. So when would I use uh, a finesse stick float? Obviously the name implies when I'm fishing, I want to fish fine. I want to fish very delicately and quietly and use a stick float that's going to enable me to do that. So I think I'll just select this smallest one here. Now this one is a eight number 10 stick float. Um, I don't know if you can see how fine the tip is but these floats are going to be fished typically close to the bank and in pegs and swims which aren't too deep and also aren't too powerful. So it's going to enable me to present my bait very, very gently and quietly and also with a lovely presentation of being able to fish the bait on the drop. So obviously for a lot of river fishing, that's really key. And I've actually set one up here. Um, in terms of the tackle I've used, I've matched it up with our 13 foot number one match, which is our lightest 13 foot rod. And this is my go-to rod when I'm fishing very fine like this, uh, with light hook lengths and small hooks. I've also matched it up with our CS10 3000 reel. The main line I'm using might surprise some, but uh, it's actually our 012 Premium Mono. So that's a very, very fine line and obviously one that's going to allow me to fish and present the, the very light stick float effectively. Believe it or not, um, myself and some of my team members um, certainly in the past would fish down to an 010 main line when we were fishing with really fine hook lengths. As with all fishing and certainly with float fishing on rivers, you've got to balance your tackle. So if you're going to fish fine, like hook lengths down to 075, uh, even 06, um, you've got to balance that to your main line. Obviously, if you fished a heavier main line with a fine hook length like that, small hooks, you're going to get a, a big abrupt change between the main line and the hook length. You, you'd never do that on a pole, but uh, I think this is a bit of a forgotten art, really. 
but it's a, a method that can be devastating on its day. So I mentioned the depths. Uh, for me, I'd be fishing this kind of float and rig um, from depths sort of from three foot, maybe up to six, seven foot. Um, and you can see the shotting pattern that I've employed here. I've actually shotted this float up with number 10 shot. Um, there's days when I might use even finer shot if I was using a smaller float. Um, some of the smallest stick floats will just take something like three number 10s. So in that case, I'd use uh, number 12s and number 11s in a similar sort of pattern, which is to start with a spread out sort of shirt button style shotting pattern. What's really great about this method is I mentioned how good it is at catching on the drop. It's quite versatile as well. You can bolt those shot down if you want. Say you want to perhaps get the bait down a little bit quicker, past some nuisance fish like bleak. But for me, this is the sort of rig and float that I'll be using on the hardest of days to catch the sneakiest of fish. So in the past, Warwickshire Raven anglers, famous anglers like Pete Rice and Tony Eaves really made a name for themselves by employing such light stick float tactics. Absolutely devastating, um, catching on the hardest of days. So a few key points to mention about the finesse stick. Um, because of the thin tips, um, you only want to use the slightest rubber you can. So one that's going to be as snug, obviously hold the float in position, but not too bulky. So I think I've got a better one on the, the really thin one here, look. So that's about as thin as I can go on the silicon. It's nice and small, so it's not impeding the float too much. Um, because obviously, as with all stick floats, you're going to be dotting them right down to the slightest pimple. So you get the sensitivity, rather like a pole float really. That lovely cane stem is enabling the float to settle as the shot settle. So if it was a heavier base, it might settle quickly and you wouldn't be able to control and read the bites quite as well as you can with a beautiful cane stick like that. And you'll notice that the rubber on the bottom is also as thin as I can get away with to get onto the cane and not too bulky. So that's a key consideration when you're fishing with a finestic float like this. Um, I also like to use a fairly short, sorry, a fairly long hook length, um, in some cases longer than this. So that one there is around about a foot, but uh, in many situations I might even go to two foot with no shot on the hook length at all. And what that's doing is it's giving me absolutely fantastic presentation to fool the, the smartest fish, particularly big roach, by really giving me a nice slow fall of the bait. Um, I also favour, for nearly all my hook lengths, in terms of tying them to the main line, a figure of eight knot, which I'll show you in a separate video. But that to me just highlights everything about this rig, just how fine, delicate, and what fantastic presentation can be achieved. And also by balancing it with a very nice, progressive soft action rod, like our 13 foot number one, you'd be surprised actually what fish you can you can land, like bonus, bream, uh, chub, all sorts of different fish, perch. You know, even when you're fishing really fine, you've got a chance of getting them out, as long as you're using balanced tackle. So I've selected two of my favorite patterns that I use when I'm fishing with the finestic floats. For years, I've loved the Drennan Fine Match in a size 24 down to a size 18, predominantly a 22 or maybe a 20. Um, and I've also been using these new uh, Drennan finesse hooks, which are actually a red colour, and I found them to be very good as well. So I like to match a hook like that to uh, a hook length from 0 0.06 millimetre, so very, very fine. Probably the heaviest I'd go. I wouldn't probably go above 09. So uh, that just emphasises the finesse that we're using when we're fishing with stick floats like this. Next up, is the Drennan range of stick floats. Now I've used these floats for years. I think they've been out for, I don't know, definitely 30 years, probably longer. And uh, for me, these take over where the finesse float starts to struggle. So if I'm fishing a bit further out from the bank, maybe sort of three rod lengths, four rod lengths out from the bank, uh, and I'm fishing in perhaps a 
bit pacier water. Not really boily water, it's just a float that's a great float, quite versatile for a lot of river fishing um, with the stick float. I, I carry them in all the sizes from a five number six up to an eight number four. And you can see I've got some older versions and some newer versions, but they're exactly the same. I think what makes them so great is the, the, the way the base and the bolsters blended together. They all seem to fish very well in all the different sizes. There's this plastic base, which is a bit more dense and slightly heavier than cane. Um, so that just helps with casting, helps with control of the float. And they've got a decent tip on as well. You can see I've actually uh, painted that one to make it a bit thicker. So that's a bit thicker than what it would be normally. That's another one there, look. So yeah, it's a very versatile float. One that I can control cast efficiently. It's not a float for holding back hard, but for the majority of stick float fishing, if I could only pick one pattern, I think this would be it. As I say, it's versatile, so I can fish it with finer hook lengths, perhaps not as fine as the, uh, the hook lengths I was using on the uh, finesse rigs, but perhaps 08 up to around about 012 would be the sort of range that I'd use. And I'd be using them with hooks. I'd still consider using the fine match in a 20 or an 18, and um, perhaps when I'm matching that with an 08 hook length. And, and then I'd move up in terms of strength to a carbon match, which is an old favorite of mine. Um, I'd use them from a size 22 down to a 18 or a 16 on this pattern of float. And I'd be using that with hook length sort of 09 up to around about 012. Um, I also do like the old Kamasan B510s if I'm chub fishing um, in a 20 and an 18. Uh, they're a lovely traditional hook, very, a crystal bend um, enough strength but nice and sharp and the true size. I think it's a fair statement to say that a lot of hooks now are much bigger than what they were so if you compare that 18 to some of the hooks on the market now uh, it's probably more like a 20 or even a 22 so I like to bear that in mind when I'm, uh, when I'm fishing on rivers. So back to the actual float and the shotting pattern. Again Similar to the finesse, but just a bit stepped up. Obviously, the float capacity is a bit greater, so I'm going to need to employ more shot. These are actually, I'm still using number 10s, but I've paired them up. So I've probably got about 10 pairs of number 10s there, and I can adjust that so I can spread them out nice and close together to get a really nice fall. And again, like with the finesse, I can, I can bolt that down as well. Uh, you'll notice the nice long hook length again. So again, it's a, it's a rig that gives me a lot of versatility, still nice and sensitive. I can change the depth, you know, I can fish up in the water with it. I can fish slightly over depth with it. And the rod that I've selected here, I've gone up in power from the one to the two. So I've gone for the 13 foot number two. So that's just going to enable me to play the fish a bit more quickly and effectively and also step up the gear. So if I was starting to hook some better fish, if there was some chub about or big perch, or if I thought that, you know, there was a chance of a bonus fish, I'd want to step up to my number two. Still got a wonderful, nice soft tip, uh, plenty of power, it's progressive power. So again, I can play fish even on finer hook lengths and hooks with great confidence. I actually stepped up to the 4000 version of the CR10 reel, could use a 3000. Um, and the main line that I'm using is the Edge Tackle 3 pound float mono. So for me, that's the reel line that I'm going to be using for the majority of the summer and autumn before the river starts coming up and before I start targeting bigger fish like chub. So that's going to be very versatile and it's gonna give me that nice balance of line between my real line and my hook length. So that's the uh, very versatile rig. Obviously there's different floats that would do a similar thing to that, but for me, I've standardized with the Drennan. So there you go. So my choice of hook length material when I'm fishing with this float, 
I mentioned typically between 08 and 012 and this is the Edge Tackle Premium Mono. It's a beautiful supple line, very strong for its diameter and again just gives me that nice finesse particularly when I'm using a longer hook length to really emphasize the natural fall of the bait. Well these are a really useful float um, as the name implies they're designed for fishing in shallower water on rivers. You'll notice that they're wire stemmed. Now wire stem floats, wire stem stick floats really come into their own when you're fishing on boilier pegs, so more turbulent pegs. And what this wire does is it's, it's quite heavy and thin so it enables the float to, to sit and to be controlled in that turbulent boily flow but also it's not too thick so it doesn't get the resistance that a thicker stem would uh, in that turbulent water so wire stem floats quite rightly are very very popular uh, particularly for stick float fishing and you'll notice that I've selected two main styles I've got a, a dome top and these are a Dave Harrell shallow number one and some tops which are more sensitive so more of an insert although it's not an insert it's actually shaped balsa but certainly a thinner tip so these two patterns of floats really cover uh, stick float situations where I'm fishing in shallower boilier pegs um, very very useful from sort of two number four up to five number four I put a drake one in there as well which I really like and I did well uh, fishing with that in the winter on the Y when I was fishing up in the water for chub and dace but um, so the two different styles I'd slightly differ with the terminal tackle I'm using so I think I'm going to start with these dome topped floats first um, I've set one up here uh, again I've gone for the 13 foot number two um, very versatile rods got enough power for fishing slightly heavier rigs like this um, so these sort of floats, given the nature of the float, I'm going to be fishing slightly bigger bait, so maybe double maggot, treble maggot, uh, casters, small bits of meat, so slightly bigger baits and because the shallow is going to be pacey, the river is going to be pacey and shallow, that dome top is going to enable me to one, control the float and control the rig without it constantly being dragged under, but also to be able to see it. So some days, you know, you're fishing at quite long range down your peg and that dome top's going to be visible. I'm still going to dot it down, so I'm not going to leave a lot of the float showing. But the great thing about the design and shape of these floats is when you do hold back, you can see the float. So you can hold it back and let it go, hold it back and let it go. And that's a devastating method. Sometimes you're fishing over depth in shallow water and you're running your bait along the bottom to where the fish are feeding, finding where they are and, and hopefully catching them. So the, the rig itself, I've only used number eights on this rig. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm fishing, I don't know there, what's that, about three or four foot deep. Uh, I've got some number eights paired up together and then number eights on their own. I'm not using anything finer than that. I don't need any smaller shot than that. Again, a nice long hook length. So for this style of fishing, I'm going to be targeting better fish like chub, um, maybe barbel. Uh, but certainly bigger fish, so I'm going to need to step up my main line and hook lengths and hooks appro uh, appropriately. So in this case, I'll step up to a four pound main line, which is an 016. Now, I'm only using this as a guide. Obviously, if you were fishing in a shallower peg and you were hooking really big fish, you'd need to step up your main line and hook lengths. But for the most part, with my match fishing and pleasure fishing on rivers, um, that's plenty strong enough certainly in the in the summer and the autumn and I'm going to be matching that up with pretty robust hook lengths as well so if I can get away with it 012 premium mono um, maybe 013 which in this case is fluorocarbon I haven't really mentioned fluorocarbon yet but I love using fluorocarbon hook lengths um, it's very very tough and what I like about it when I'm fishing in this situation, maybe I am trotting down the swim quite a long way and retrieving it back. The fluorocarbon's a bit stiffer. It doesn't tend to spin up so much. So that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, I'm using a bit beefier tackle on here and I'm gonna reflect that with the hooks as well. And one of my favorite patterns of hooks for this kind of fishing is the old Kamazan B711. And I'll carry them from in sizes from a 21 down to 11 
But for me, most of the time when I'm fishing like this, I'm going to be hopefully using a 17 or a 15, uh, just to give me a chance of getting bigger fish out, like big chub and barbel, on the bigger baits that I'm going to be using. So that kind of summarizes the hooks, hook length and reel line. A bit about the shine, again, very versatile. That's the great benefit about using lots of shot instead of three or four big shot. You know, it might be that I want to bolt that down so I can just simply move those shot down, create a bolt very easily, very quickly. But it's a nice bulk, it's a nice stream, streamlined bulk. It's one that's not likely to tangle as much. So say I've just got two number fours or two number ones there. Um, often you'll get that tangling more than you will do with more shot like this. And perhaps leave three droppers below it. So that's going to give me more control in perhaps a pacier swim or an even boilier peg. Um, but for me, these kind of shallow sticks have been a revelation. They've sort of turned some pegs that were previously difficult to fish into you know, pegs that can be easily fished now by using the correct float. So the other float that I like to use when I'm fishing with a shallow stick, I mentioned it at the start, was the number two from uh, Dave Howell's range. So obviously again, it's a short float so if you're fishing in shallow water, you know, you don't want a float that's going to be too long and perhaps disturbing the fish. It's got a short wire stem that's very, very stable, um, but not too clunky. And also this nice shaped body here is going to allow you to control the float, but you've still got the sensitivity of that nice tip. So this for me is when I'm fishing perhaps for smaller fish like predominantly dace and roach in shallower pegs. Uh, odd bonus fish. So I'm going to match that accordingly with the main line and hook length. So I'll be using pretty much the same sort of tackle as I was on the Drennan stick float. So a three pound uh, float main line and finer hook length to match. So sort of between 08 and 010, maybe 012. And again, just referencing the fluorocarbon, even in the finer diameters. Just that bit stiffer just helps to prevent the line from twisting up as much if you're retrieving it a long way. So those are two really useful patterns for using when you're fishing a stick float in shallower, more turbulent swims. So moving on to the next series of floats, again wire stem, and these are a step up in size um, from the shallow sticks. So for me, they're for fishing in deeper water and for fishing further out from the bank. And again, I've categorized them into two families. We've got these insert sticks here and these dome top sticks. So same characteristics with the lovely wire stem, which casts very nicely, controls very well. And also, as I mentioned, has a great benefit when you're fishing in more turbulent water. So I tend to use these type of sticks a lot on most of my rivers, so fishing on the Severn, on the Y, um, these are my sort of go-to patterns really. Obviously those rivers are typically a bit deeper and you're going to be at times fishing further out from the bank. So let's have a look at them separately. Let's go for the insert sticks first. And one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the shallow water sticks is that I tend to use three rubbers. So on the finesse stick and the draining stick, I only use two. I just use one at the top and one at the bottom. I want to minimize the amount of rubbers uh, that perhaps could affect the, the presentation of the floats. But I need to put one on a wire stem float. I need to have a, a rubber just below the, the balsa body where it tapers into the wire stem. Otherwise you'll get an angle, you'll get the line not running along the float and then obviously have the rubber at the bottom again overlapping to help prevent tangles but keep it as neat as possible and a neat silicon rubber at the top it just fits over that insert so for me i love this shape of float this type of this shape of stick float got a nice slim tapered body up to a bit of a shoulder with 
the tip. Now, one thing I really like about these floats, it's the Dave Harrell number one insert stick, is the fact that that's a hollow tip. So it allows the light to penetrate through it and it makes it very, very visible. A lot of the time when you're river fishing, um, you know, the light can be very difficult, very tricky where you've got a, a ripple light today, it's a dappled effect and you've got different colours, you've got different trees, maybe boats on the far bank, buildings. It makes seeing your float very difficult and with these insert sticks, these hollow tips have been a revelation so I really, really like them. So for me, this type of stick float is very, very versatile. I can use this for catching smaller fish like dace and roach, also bigger dace, chub, um, very, very versatile. And as with all the stick floats I mentioned, I've set one up here. And again, despite the fact that this is a eight number four stick float, I've shotted it up with number eights. So you can see I've got a lot of number eights on the line there. In this case, I've got them kind of tapering. I've got three number eights, three number eights, three number eights, three number eights, and I've got two number eights then it goes down to one number eight. So basically, again, the versatility of having all those number eight shots means I can create so many different types of presentation. Um, the rod I've matched this up with is our 15 foot zero. So one thing to talk about in referencing rods when you stick float fishing, obviously you need to think about the depth of the water that you're fishing and also the distance out that you're fishing from the bank and probably also the wind conditions. So when I'm starting to fish deeper water, like over six foot, um, for me, I like to use a longer rod. I love a 15 foot rod. It just makes the job so much easier, controlling the float and coping with the extra depth that you sometimes get. You know, with a 15 foot rod, I'd have no problem fishing up to 12, 13 foot deep. Um, and I absolutely love the, the 15 foot zero for a lot of my uh, stick float fishing. So apart from when I'm fishing with bigger floats and heavier baits for bigger fish, this is kind of my go-to rod. I've mixed it, matched it up with the, um, this is a 3000 size reel, C CS10 3000 reel. And in this case, I've spooled up with four pound edge tackle float line. So it's 016 in diameter, which gives me a nice robust line if I'm catching lots of fish, but it's still fine enough to fish with some sensitivity if I need to drop my hook length down to say 08, 09. Um, and I'll use this with no fear up to sort of 012 hook lengths. Um, it really is a beautiful light and balanced set, set up. And like I mentioned, that extra length of rod just helps me control the float when I'm fishing further out into the river. Particularly if I've got a, a bad downstream wind, I can get behind the float with that extra length and it just makes the job so easy. So I mentioned the hook lengths quickly, but again, I'd sort of mix it up between our premium mono, perhaps 010, uh, 012. Um, but on occasions when the fishing's tough, I might drop down to an 08. So that just shows the versatility of, of this setup. And hook wise, again, I'm gonna match my hooks as best I can to that. So I really love the, the carbon match hooks. I've already referenced them. Um, so for me, a lot of the time when I'm fishing this type of float, I'll be using the, the carbon match from a 20 down to a 14. I guess on the heaviest hook lengths, um, in the heavier flows, catching bigger fish, I'd use a 14, perhaps on the Y. But no problem using a 20 um, when I'm fishing rivers like the Avon. So just highlights how versatile it is. So moving on to the other type of float, which was the dome top. So really, this is a, a step up when it comes to the terminal tackle that I'm using, the baits that I'm using and the fish that I'm targeting. So a bit like the shallow water stick, the dome top of these floats combined with the wire stem makes it very, very easy to fish in more powerful water. Again, I can see the float easily uh, as it's trotting down the river and I can control it and 
hold it back, ease it through, do whatever I want. Um, I've got this set up with a very similar shotting pattern to the insert stick. Again, number eight shots. In this case, I've doubled up some number eight shots in the sort of bottom two thirds of the rig. Um, again, nice long hook length. This, this is just straight off one of my rigs that I must have been using uh, last season. So I've got a, uh, getting on for a two foot hook length there. And just to reference the depth, obviously when you're fishing different swims, different depths, and you're changing the depth that you're fishing during the day, it's very easy just to adjust your float, move it up, fish a bit deeper. In that case, I wouldn't really need to do too much with the actual shots, maybe just a few tweaks, but straight away, I'm fishing and I've increased the depth by a foot. Conversely, I can drop it down. Um, so many permutations, like I keep mentioning. And that's the beauty of stick float fishing, especially when you're using lots of number eights like this. And I did reference it before, but in this situation, when you are casting further out from the bank, you might be doing a good strong underhand cast or even an overhead cast. Um, having more shot like that actually helps reduce tangles. You think it would cause more tangles. But having the shot nicely spread out equally and it's surprising how far you can actually cast a stick float. Especially when you've got floats like this with slightly heavier bases and uh, as long as you feather the line correctly you shouldn't have any problem. Certainly better than, I keep going on about it, but better than using less shot like number ones or number fours. I know it takes saves time setting up but for me, I just simply couldn't fish uh, a stick float effectively for most of the time without using number eight shot like that. So the rod I'm using in this case, obviously I've stepped up the gear, um, probably targeting bigger fish, bigger chub, odd barbel, perhaps catching lots of fish quickly like on the Y. So I've gone for the 15 foot number two. So I've still got that nice soft tip. Um, which is going to help cushion the strike and when I'm playing the fish, but the progressive action on the number two is just that bit more powerful. So, you know, if I do hook bigger fish, I've got more control, but I've still got that lovely progressive action that doesn't lock up. Match that up with a, a 4000 CS10 reel, and I'm actually using a heavier main line. So I'm stepping up from a four to a five pound in our edge uh, float mono which has a diameter of 018 and really for me that's about as heavy as I'll go for the most part when I'm uh, stick float fishing um, you know you start going heavier than that and you start getting issues with casting you know the resistance of the heavier line so you have to use a heavier float bit of a vicious circle really but you know with that kind of main line I'm going to be I wouldn't want to be dropping below 010 uh, I'd want to be fishing 010 to 014. So same in the premium mono, something like that. Minimum 010. A lot of the time I'll be using 012, maybe even 013 or 015. But the fact that I've got that slightly heavier, more robust mainline means I can step up if need be. And again, going back to balancing everything together. So back to my favorite pattern of hook for fishing heavier, uh, targeting bigger fish, bigger baits is the Kamazan B711. And uh, in this situation, I might be using a 13 if I'm using a bunch of maggots or a piece of meat, and obviously a 15 and a 17 using maggots casters. Might go down to a 19, but uh, for the most part in this situation, I'm gonna be fishing fairly positive. And uh, for me, that's hooks so an absolutely brilliant balance, uh, matching up with the line and the rod. One thing um, I will reference on the actual rig, something that I haven't mentioned yet, but when I'm using stick floats like this with lots of shot, so when I'm using the insert stick or the, uh, the dome top stick, I actually often use a different line to my main line. And I've been using fluorocarbon for the last sort of um, three years, and I found it's really helped. So in the case of the heavier rig with the 08, 18, five pound uh, float 
line. Um, I've been using 018 fluorocarbon as my actual rig line. Um, my thinking behind that is that the, I mentioned it before in terms of the hook lengths, but it's a stiffer line. And I think when you're using lots of shot, um, the stiffness of the fluorocarbon really helps. So I tend to make up my heavier rigs on that uh, 018 fluorocarbon and then to match with the insert sticks on my four pound, I'll use 016. So I'm matching the same diameter, but I'm changing the attributes of the line. So for my rigs, I'm actually using fluorocarbon a lot of the time on my stick floats. And we'll talk about that with bolos as well. But I think that's a great tip. Just helps reduce tangles in the situations where you perhaps don't mend the line or you pull out of a fish or something happens and the, the, the rig's in the air. It just seems to reduce the tangles. So uh, that's something I've definitely picked up on in the last few years. So there you go. That's two great rigs for fishing further out in rivers and when you're fishing with different types of presentation. So you've got the finesse of the insert stick and you've got the stability um, of the dome top stick. So finally in this stick float selection, we've got these lignum stick floats. Now it's fair to say these are quite specialized. I'm sure these are well over 30 years old and uh, as you can see, they're quite battered, but in certain situations, they're floats that I really like to use. I use them from six number four up to 10 number four and the situations where I'm typically going to be using a lignum stick is where I am casting way away from the bank um, and probably the pace is not too powerful which would require a, a wire stem and also it's not so turbulent. So it's kind of a crossover between a cane stem and a wire stem really. Um, so I've got three or four that I have permanently set up on winders just for those situations. Um, you can see, uh, for the most part, they've got a, a shoulder, um, like many of the other stick floats that I've shown you, but the key difference is this lignum wood base. Now, lignum's a, a hard wood, it's a heavy wood, uh, and it just gives extra weight to the float to enable that distance to be achieved and also to give you a really nice stability. But it's not too much, it just seems to be that perfect balance. Um, I think true lignum sticks are quite difficult to get hold of nowadays, so um, perhaps that's a reason why they're not so used, but uh, in certain situations, so for me it's uh, not going to say finesse, but I'll probably be fishing with a bit more finesse than I would be with the wire stem floats, slightly thinner hook lengths, slightly smaller hooks, perhaps trying to catch chub, tricky chub, um, where you are going to need to fish with a bit more finesse. So I've set one up here on the rod and set it up on the 15 foot zero. I talked about this rod before. Um, I really love this rod, it's so versatile. We talked about the extra length helping with control, uh, particularly when you're fishing further out at range. And the version I've got here is a seven number four, uh, slightly different color but that's a true lignum stick. Um, nice length, not too long, not too short. And as I say, when you're casting, it really casts like a dream. Uh, again, shot it up with number eights. I've got one, two, three, four, five pairs of number eights in the sort of top third to halfway. And then I've just got one, two, three, four number eights. And then I've got three number tens. So again, I've got the flexibility to change uh, that around. I might spread all the shot out, not in pairs, all in singles, might bulk it down. For the most part, when I'm casting, I talked about underarm casting, overhead casting. I like to have the shot spread out like that. Um, this is off a rig in my box. So it looks like I was using about an 010 hook length to a 20 B510. So perhaps that was a hard day trying to fool a few chub and roach on the Warwickshire Raven. But definitely a rig and a float that I'd be lost without. So just to summarize the main line, 
The main line on that is back down to 014, the three pound. So just to emphasize that, you know, again, it sounds fine, but combined with the right hook length and the right rod, uh, you can fish that very effectively. Hook lengths, sort of 08, 010. Um, gives you a great chance of hooking and getting the chub out. If I could fish 012, that would be mega, but a lot of the times the difference between 010 and 012 is the difference between getting a bite and not getting a bite. Certainly off the sneaky chub anyway. And I think I'd go old school with the hooks as well. So I'd go for the B510s, the barbless hooks I talked about in a 20 or an 18. So the B510 is a barbless hook. And when you are targeting tricky chub, it's a really, really good hook because chub have got quite hard mouths. And when you're fishing a small hook, like a size 20, maybe even a 22, uh, the barbless hook just penetrates hard, better into that hard mouth. And you'd think a, a micro barb would be better for keeping the hook in, but in some situations, it's almost like the micro barb stops the hook from going all the way in and you could pull out. So if I was just fishing for chub on a tough day, I think that would be my choice. Probably a 20 B510. I can fish that with a, a double maggot or a single maggot. Maggots nowadays are so good and they're so big, uh, a single maggot on a, a 20 is not a problem. But uh, I thought I'd mention that. It's a bit of a specialised float, but it's definitely one that can... Uh, come up trumps on really tough days. So one disadvantage of using lots of lead number eight shot for your stick float rigs is the fact that you need quite a few and it takes time to, to make the rigs, especially if you're using a, a heavy stick like a 14 or 16 number four. So what I do is uh, I keep quite a few sticks set up on winders, especially for match fishing, just to save time if I do get a tangle or if I want to change to a, a different type of rig completely, it only really takes a minute or so to, to change the rig over. So I just thought I'd show you how I attach the main line to the rigs. Um, I'm going to select that treasured lignum stick that I've got on a winder here. And the way I like to do it is, um, I just do a simple full blood knot. So it's not the the strongest knot but it's quick and because most of the time I'm obviously using a hook length that's less than my main line if I do snag up or if I lose a big fish and the hook length breaks it's definitely going to break before the knot on the main line um, so basically I'm just twisting the line above and below I can just get that. The wind just caught it. Put that back through and pull the two together. So if you have a look at a, a full blood knot, it's quite an easy knot. Very neat, unobtrusive. And I'll trim that off. I know I should use scissors, but... So what I like to achieve is, I want the knot to be below the float. So I've tied the rig to the main line and now I'm putting the float above the knot. Now obviously uh, it depends on the depth of the water that you're fishing but for the most part most of my rigs I reckon are around about eight foot in length to start with. So obviously if the peg's deeper I can push the float up and I can bring my shot right up to that knot around about eight foot. So that covers 90% of my stick float fishing. The reason I want the knot below the float is if I do snag up on the main line, sometimes on snaggy pegs, perhaps where you're fishing up against a shelf which has got some snags and you snag up, it's not on your hook length, it's on the main line. If you pull for a break and the knot's above the float, nine times out of 10, you're gonna lose the float, which is a shame, but you're also gonna leave a rig in the peg, which can cause all sorts of trouble. So if I do have that situation where the main line is snags, not very often, at least I'm going to get my float back. So that's why I like to have the knot below my float, but also it's not interfering with the float at all. 
So when I'm fishing and casting and controlling the float, especially on a windy day like this, the knot's not getting caught by the wind. So I've just got the pure main line above the float. So in this situation, I just wind that, wind that off down to the hook and I'm fishing. So as I mentioned, obviously that rig's probably got uh, 12 or 14 shot on. Um, it would take me probably 10 minutes, maybe longer to set that up again in a match. So that's why I have them set up on winders. To conclude the stick float video, I just wanted to emphasize the real line that I've used throughout the video. It's our edge tackle float mono. Um, and I've used it between three, four and five pounds to cover all my stick float situations. I'd say, yeah, pretty much 95% of my stick float situations. Um, I really, really love the line. It's very, very soft and supple. Um, and as it says on the tin, it is designed for float fishing. So it has good attributes for floating. I'm not a fan of spraying the line with silicon. I've done that in the past and I just find it, uh, it wears off quite quickly and also attracts lots of dirt onto the spool. So I don't add anything to this line. It floats very, very well. Um, it's got a nice stretch. Uh, it's fairly robust for a float line. Obviously it's not going to be as robust as a, a sinking line or a specimen line. But for my float fishing, I'm absolutely sold on this line now. Um, one thing I do do, uh, if I need to, is I'll just treat the area just above the float, perhaps one or two foot above the float, with actual silicon. So this is uh, a silicon used for fly fishing to um, make your flies, dry flies float and also make your line float. So I'll actually add that to the top. I'll just quickly demonstrate on this uh, set up here, this shallow stick here. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of silicon in the most vital area just above the float. Now I don't do this very often but on the days I need to I will do it and it does make a difference. Because in my mind when I'm stick float fishing this bit of line is the most critical part to control. You know the line 20 feet down towards the reel I'm not bothered about. Um, I'm controlling the float, I'm presenting the float, I'm running it through the swim and all the time I'm controlling it with this part of line. So in a situation where I do need that line to float really well, that's what I do. But no, in summary, um, I'm really really pleased with this float fishing line and uh, tested it over the last 18 months and it's really really held up very well.